What is up guys? Welcome back to Jersey Nick Moto. We just can't get out of this garage, can we? We're having one of the worst winters up here in New Jersey that we have had in quite a few years. So while we're still stuck in the garage and not out on the road, I figured I'd do a little review of my motorcycle camping gear or just camping gear, whatever you want to call it, because people have asked me about it. So I figured I'd take this time to come in this dingy, chilly garage and make this video for you. I've got a bin full of stuff I use for camping. It's not going to be in any special order. I'm going to just pull stuff out, talk about it. If I can find my links to Amazon where I bought this stuff, most of the stuff's off Amazon, some of it isn't. I'll put them in the description below. If not, you're just going to have to Google the stuff. Let's get to it. This is what I use for camping. All right, we'll start with food since that came out first. Always when I'm on the road, camping or not, I always stock up on beef jerky. You can buy this anyway. It's a good snack. You pull into a rest stop, get some gas, you're hungry, chew on some jerky. It'll hold you over for another few hours. When I'm actually camping, I use these mountain house meals. You can find them on the internet. I don't think they have them on Amazon. I will say the dinners, like mac and cheese, are a lot better than the breakfast they put out. But it'll still, it's still good in a pinch, some scrambled eggs. But the dinners are actually not bad at all. So look up Mountain House. They're very easy to do. You just put some boiling water in there, stir it up a little bit, let it sit, and you have a little dinner or breakfast or lunch or whatever on the go. All right, so you might ask, well, how am I going to boil the water? Well, I have one of these little handy-dandy jet boils. They come in two sizes. I think this is the smaller size because we are traveling on a motorcycle. It's just made up of this nice cup. I got the camo one. You get yourself a little fuel canister. This is the stove itself. Turn this, get some gas going. Give it a couple pops and you're all ready to go. I probably shouldn't be standing here holding this because I got two gas cans right under this workbench. So we're gonna shut that off. But you get the idea, fill a cup of water, boil it up, bam, you got boiling water. This thing, it was a very good investment. Uh, I think it was somewhere around hundred bucks for the smaller one. Again, if I could find the links, I will put them down below. If not, just Google jet boil. This was really worth it. If you want like a, a small kind of camp stove type thing, they have other accessories where you can actually put a skillet on here and you're sh short on space, like travel on a motorcycle, I highly recommend one of these jet boils. It's come in handy many times. It'll get you boiling water, it'll let you cook a meal. A lot of things you could do with this. So check out Jet Boil. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I'm just showing you what I bought to go moto camping. All right, while we're on eating, you're gonna need something to eat with, right? I have this little K-Bar two-in-one spork type thing. It's got the spoon and fork, and you pull this out. You got a little knife if you got to cut up some meat. Only a couple bucks on Amazon. I mean, it's not perfect, but it does the job. It'll get some food into your mouth. You're going to need something to eat out of, right? So I got these little collapsible bowl and cup from, I believe it's Sea to Summit. I think that's right. If it's not right, I'll correct it on the screen. But again, if you want to save space, I could have got a bigger cup. But, you know, you could fill this up a couple times and have your morning coffee and then it goes right back to that. If you need a bowl to eat some soup or some noodles, whatever you bring along with you, you got your bowl right there. You're done. Wash it out. Bam. Back nice and compact. They all fit back together. And you have your little cooking eating set right there. Nice little gadget. Yeah, see the summit. Found these on Amazon. All right, so of course when you're out camping, at some point it's gonna get dark, right? So I use one of these little headlamps. I, don't know, I think I bought it at Lowe's or something like that. You know, you could wear it on your head. What I like to do with it is, and it's got these little like colored warning things too, I guess if you're in trouble. What I like to do is at night in the tent, I put a little hook on it. I have the loop on top of the tent and I hang this up and that's my lighting in the tent that night. But these always come in handy if you're doing things, you know, fishing around the saddlebags and the bike in the dark, you can throw this on your head. So always have a headlamp with you. Again, they're pretty reasonably priced. They last a long time. So definitely grab one of these. Also for at night, I found this really, really good flashlight. It's made by Coast. This is probably one of the brightest. 
I don't know if you can really tell. This is one of the brightest and most durable flashlights I've ever owned. They're, they're, I think this might have been a little pricey. They're made by a company named Coast. You could adjust the beam. It's a really good flashlight, especially if it's going to be like bouncing around in the bottom of your saddlebags or you know, getting thrown around at the campsite. It's pretty durable. I put a little strap on it in case you have to hang it around your neck or you know, something like that. So always have a good flashlight with you. Because even if you plan on rolling in before dark, it doesn't always happen. And then, you know, you got to get up in the middle of the night for something. You always want to have light. This is something that comes in handy too. A camp shovel. Again, another Amazon find. It, you know, you open it up, tighten it up. You got a nice little shovel. You want to throw dirt on your campfire to uh, put it out. It's always good to have a little shovel. Folds up nice and neat, nice and compact. I could fold it the way it was. Somehow. There you go. Throw it on the bike. The only thing I don't like about it, it's a little heavy. You know, you try and keep uh, try and keep the weight down when traveling on a motorcycle, but if you want a camp shovel, it's a uh, this isn't bad at all. I would just type in camp shovel on Amazon. Another thing, it's really not a necessity, but if you want to have one, I got this little hatchet off Amazon. Now, it's good for like cutting up kindling to start a campfire. It's not the sharpest. I mean, I have to get a, put a nice edge on this. Uh, John, AKA Rolling Stone, if you're listening, next time I come down to Tennessee, maybe you could uh, sharpen this up for me since you did such a good job on my other knife. Uh, it's sharp enough that I almost cut my thumb off with it once though, so it will do the job. Uh, it's just a little hatchet off of Amazon. I put some grippy tape on it because, you know, it does slip out of your hand a little bit. But if you want to use it to cut up some branches to start your campfire, something like that, it's not going to cut through anything big, but it's handy to have. Again, I look for stuff that's small, I could throw in the saddlebags, it won't take up much room. It's not a bad little tool. Alright, sometimes after a long day of riding, you get to camp, you get all set up, you want to sit down, right? So, you get yourself a camping chair. This camping chair is the ultralight folding chair. You get this jumbled mess, and you just mess around with it. What I do is I mess around with it so it looks kind of right. Like, right, that, that looks kind of right, right? And then, You get this, and you kind of stare at it and scratch your head for a minute. And then you say, all right, I think it goes like this. And then what you do is you curse a little bit because it's hard to stretch. Because it feels like it's going to break, but it's not. And then you curse a little more. You got a nice place to put your ass and relax. You do, you hope you don't fall down. And it works. Believe me, if you could fit it on your bike, I mean, I'm riding a bagger. I know a lot of people don't have that much room, but if you could fit this after a long day in a saddle, you just want to relax and look at the stars or sit by the campfire, yeah, you should get one. All right, now down to the nitty gritty, the tent. All right, it's not packed that neat. When I get ready to go away, I roll it up nice and tight. That's just from the last camping trip that I went on, which I believe was sometime in October. It is the Salida two-person tent by Kelpie. This is it, in case you want to look it up. But two-person tent's good for one person. I can fit myself and a little gear in there. If you want to put two people in here, make sure you really like them, because you're going to be close. If you really want a two-person tent, I'd go for a three, maybe a four if you could find one that packs small. Now, when I have this rolled up nice and tight, it packs pretty small. This is it. This is the tent itself, rain fly, um, tent poles, and spikes. They're not the best spikes, they're a little cheap, I bent a few of them. Uh, I, I think with any tent you have to go with nice strong aftermarket spikes if you want something that's going to last. But they do the job for now. So it's a Kelpie Salida two person tent. It's good for what I use it for, you know, go camping four, five, six times a year. It's fine. You know, if you're more of an avid camper or you're one of these guys that are going to like live off the bike for a summer, I'd probably invest in something better. There are probably better options, but I've had it in the rain, never gotten wet, keeps the bugs out. It's a good tent for what I use it for. So 
Kelty Salida two-person tent. That's the tent I use. What I always do before I put my tent down, I put a tarp down. This is a cheap tarp you can get in Walmart or Harbor Freight or whatever for a couple dollars. It'll last the season. I always like to put it because it's a base layer, so the tent's not right on the ground. Keep things clean. You can set your gear up on it so everything's not in the dirt. You can get a thicker one if you want. I went with this normal one because I'll fold it up nice and tight and it will pack small. All right, let's talk about sleeping. Now, I don't do much cold weather camping. So I got this Winter Outfitters 35 to 40 degree bag. Uh, it's a decent sleeping bag. It'll keep you warm, I'd say, into the 50s. The last camping trip I went, when I did the Garden of State Fall Classic, we went camping. I think it was, it was probably in October. It went down into the 30s that night. And yeah, it, this worked, but you would want something a little better than this. But again, this is another Amazon find. That's the brand right there. Winter Outfitters, 35 to 40 degrees. It packs down to 2.8 pounds. It's waterproof, five-year guarantee. It's, you know, it's kind of small to pack on the bike. It's got this nice little stuff sack. Um, again, if you're gonna do any cold weather camping, this is not the bag for you, but if you're like a seasonal camper like me, this'll be just fine. I do take this in case it does get chilly at night. This is just a blanket I got off Amazon. Very cheap very reasonable. You can find them on there. I'll just roll it up. It'll be my bedroll or whatever you want to call it. Bungee it somewhere on the bike in case I need a little extra warmth that night. I got this blanket with me. Pillows. What I use for a pillow is this little my pillow thing that it folds up. You can roll it up and you can tuck this in and it packs nice and tight. You can find it on the MyPillow website. It's not the best pillow, but it'll give you a decent night's sleep. What I usually do is I'll roll my leather jacket up and put this on top of the jacket and then I'm high enough to sleep comfortably. And also when I travel, you've seen from my road trip videos, I use my tea bags for all my clothes and stuff, but I also have this Sea to Summit dry bag. It is a 35 liter big river. I got it off of Amazon. And this is where all the camping stuff goes. And I put the tent, the sleeping bag, the tarp, um, whatever I could fit in it goes into this bag to keep everything nice and dry in case I hit rain. I just wanted to give you a basic idea of what I use for motorcycle camping. Again, I do it about four or five times out of the year. I'm sure there's better gear out there, but this gear suits me just fine. Look it up online, see if you like it for yourself. If you guys have any suggestions what you use that might be better, let me know. Leave it in the comments down below. You gonna do any motorcycle camping trips this year? Let me know about that too. Leave it in the comments down below. Thank you for watching Jersey Nick Moto. At the time I'm making this video, I'm at about 980 subscribers, trying to hit that thousand mark. So if you have not yet, please hit the subscribe button. If you're new to the channel, we're not always in the garage. We're out on the bike a lot. Go to my motorcycle road trip playlist. I've traveled to all the lower 48 states. So if you could hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. I'll see all you guys in the next video. Hopefully we're out of the garage. I know I've been saying that for the last couple weeks, but we'll be back on the road soon. So thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Keep your head on a swivel out there later. I right, wait a minute. I talk the talk all the time. I should walk the walk, right? I always say this ain't a hobby. This is a lifestyle. It's about 33 degrees out. Should we go for a ride? Even if it's just around the neighborhood, I think we should wake Lola up and go for a ride. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go for a ride. Come with me.